Welcome to today's webinar with ATG. I appreciate you tuning in today to learn about Bluebeam Review. Today's presentation is all about party tricks with Bluebeam Review. I'm going to be showing off some of the more lesser known functions of review that are handy to add to your everyday workflows. Now, party tricks is sort of a, uh, a clickbaity title. I do a lot of Bluebeam training and webinars and presentations, and there's always those, oh, hey, I didn't know it could do that. And those are the types of things that I want to show you today. My name is Jason Hartley. I am a senior technical specialist here at ATG. We are a Bluebeam Platinum partner. I am a Bluebeam certified instructor. In addition to Bluebeam, we are also a Platinum partner with Autodesk. We partner with Bimbox, and Esri, and Leica. And we've got some other partners that we work with as well. Our goal is to be your one-stop shop for any of your software or hardware needs. Whether you need licensing or training or support, ATG is here for you. And I really like doing these webinars and our entire team enjoys doing these webinars. Uh, we like to create this content to help our customers become more efficient and proficient in the software they use every day. And one of those software is Bluebeam Review. So today we're gonna be looking at, um, you know, what is Bluebeam Review for? What are some of the everyday functions of uh, Bluebeam Review? We'll get into those party tricks that I mentioned, and we'll sprinkle in some Q&A throughout. So in this Zoom interface, feel free to use the question and answers panel. If you have any questions that you'd like answered about Bluebeam Review uh, related to the things I'm talking about or not, go ahead and type them in, and if we've got time, we'll go ahead and answer them. Now, today we're talking about Bluebeam Review, and before we dive in, we need to talk about the company behind it. Um, they are, they've been out for almost 20 years now. Uh, there's a lot of users around the globe. This slide is kind of outdated. I'm sure we've cracked the 2 million mark. A lot of folks are using it, not just in the COVID times, but anywhere things are being constructed or anywhere we're, we're interacting with PDF files, Bluebeam is certainly taking off in that aspect. They like to say that they, uh, Bluebeam empowers the people to advance the way our world is built. Now, it's not just about building things, right? Uh, of course, construction is a big part of what we do, but in the AEC space, there's a lot of things that we can use Bluebeam for prior to construction. And with that, it's common to say Bluebeam when referring to Bluebeam Review. Bluebeam is the company, Review is the flagship proficient or project efficiency uh, collaboration solution for AEC. I will be doing my best to say review, but sometimes it is common just to say Bluebeam. So with that, uh, today, uh, well, on the screen here, you're seeing multiple versions. There is an iPad version uh, in addition to the desktop version. Uh, and that desktop version comes in three versions or flavors. Standard, CAD, and Extreme. I'm going to be using the latest and greatest updated version of Review 20 Extreme. However, just about everything that we're going to be doing today will work on the standard or CAD versions as well. Now, speaking of latest and greatest, uh, Tuesday, if you have the maintenance package with your Bluebeam Review license, you probably got this pop up letting you know that there was a review or a review update available. So uh, if you installed that update, you'll now be at version 20.2.15. And I'm going to be showing you a couple tricks related to this update. So with that, don't worry, we're almost done with PowerPoint. So first I want to talk about what is review for, right? Um, if you're tuning in, you probably already have an idea of what review is for. It's a great PDF tool targeted to those AEC professionals, but it's much more than that. Anybody who deals with PDF files in a traditional sense, like Adobe or Nitro or Foxit or whatever, however you interact with PDF files, any of those users can benefit from the workflows available in review, from organizing documents, adding stamps, making text changes. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things that we can do inside of review. Secondly, you know, most of us have transitioned to working from home, and we might not have access to the printers and the paper and the office supplies that we once had. And 
we still need to review our plans. And we can, you know, look at it that way as, as the work from home aspect, or we can also look at, you know, adding more green choices to our workflows. And we can replace those paper-based workflows with review. We can do all of our printing to, directly to Bluebeam, we can create our red lines and markups, and we can easily respond to those markups all within review. Now, in an earlier slide, I mentioned that Bluebeam empowers people to advance the way our world is built. And this ties into the construction aspect of Bluebeam. We can use our iPads or our window-based tablets like surfaces out in the field and easily do our punch list or inspection processes right on site. Using review, we can add pictures of those issues, we can give our detailed notes, uh, add symbology, and add location information uh, to those on-site issues to be condensed right into a PDF. And lastly, let's face it, uh, collaboration has changed a lot over the last year, uh, or, or a couple of years, I should say. Even without a pandemic, our teams are getting more spread out. We're working with people across the country or across the globe, and meeting in person to review plans isn't as easy as it once was. Bluebeam Studio enables us to collaborate in the cloud by either sharing our files or working together in real time on many PDFs at once. So with that, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's get out of PowerPoint and let's demonstrate Bluebeam Review 20. Now, with this, I have a, a, a list of things that I wanna show off. I'm actually gonna minimize my my uh, oh here my PowerPoint, and I've got my list of party tricks. Now I've got a list of twenty. We're gonna see what we get through, and I've I'll throw in some bonus ones uh, along the way. Everything that I will be demonstrating is from a Bluebeam curated um, data set. These are files that you've probably seen myself or others at ATG demonstrate for you before, except for this cheesy elevation. And I am so excited to share with you my masterpiece. Oh, oh, there was a preview. Can't have that yet. I made a cheesy elevation because we're going to be doing some fun stuff inside of review with it. So in no particular order, except for the order I've written them down in, we're going to go through those party tricks. Now, some of these are related to new updates inside of review. And the first one I want to show you is this new function that came out uh, with that update this week. This is a dimension that I've just placed in this drawing. And it, I calibrated off of this 30 foot dimension to show uh, that it is in fact 30 feet. That's a, something that I normally do. If you're not aware, you can do all sorts of measurements inside of review. And when you set that scale, you have the ability to calibrate where you can choose two known points to calibrate to. And in this case, I grabbed uh, this 30 foot dimension. I told it that it was 30 feet and I applied that scale. Now from here, I can go place more measurements and I can go through and verify that that is in fact 30 feet. Now I'll drag this up. And of course I can you know, change colors and do all sorts of things like that. What I'm wanting to show you here though, is not all the customization of the appearance of this particular dimension. I wanna show you the new functionality that came out in that update. And that is that even though this dimension is calibrated to this file, and I've told it that one inch equals 30 feet or whatever this value equals 30 feet, I now have this ability to go up to the properties bar at the top and change the scale of that particular dimension. So if I wanted to know what that was in inches, I can change it to inches. If I want to change it to yards, I can change that as well. This is not changing the actual scale of the dimension or my drawing. This is giving me an independent control of each individual measurement inside of review. So if I want to know how many centimeters that is, I don't have to do math anymore. I can use this uh, unit pull down from the properties menu. Pretty cool uh, function. I think this will be handy. Again, if you're on maintenance and you had access to that new update, you will see some differences when you go up to your unit's property bar when you have a dimension inside of your PDF file. All right, 
All right, that's number one. Number two, uh, also a new function of Bluebeam Review 20, if you haven't seen it before, is this new search uh, option under help. So there's a flyout here that allows you to type in your tool or command. So if I'm looking for something specific like measure, I can get there quickly and use those tools accordingly. Because sometimes you know you might be in a different profile, you might have a different uh, set of toolbars set up, or maybe you're working on somebody else's machine and you're just not uh, sure where where things are. You can always come up to help, use that find tool command, and type in anything. So pretty cool function. All right, as I mentioned, I'm going to be jumping around quite a bit because I'm doing some of these uh, commands in no particular order. So the next one I want to show you is the web tab. If you're not familiar with this, if you go to window, there is an option for a web tab. This will give you uh, direct access to the bluebeam.com website, but this is still a browser. So if you needed to go to google.com, you can do that. Or better yet, go to atgusa.com, where you can see all of our events, like uh, this webinar today, and future things we've got going on. In addition to using this web tab, you know, this is great for going in and copying specs or getting easy links that you can hyperlink things to. More about that in a minute. Um, you can also access the Bluebeam support downloads. And this is a, a lesser known function, and this is really hard to find. So um, I'll type this, or I'll copy paste this into the chat if you're interested in grabbing some extensions. So there are a lot of cool extensions that are su supplied by Bluebeam and they allow us to import new tool sets, new stamps, full profiles or other dictionaries to Bluebeam review. So if we go down and look at our tool sets, they've given us symbols for uh, HVAC, PNID, as well as electrical symbols, architecture and landscape, construction, estimation. There's a lot of good stuff in here that you can bring in. And of course, you can customize it however you like. So I would recommend downloading some of these files. They're really easy to load. And I'll show you that in a minute. In addition to the tool sets, there are also stamps. So through these stamps, you're going to see uh, the confidential draft progress print. But there's also interactive ones that are form based, where we have check boxes and other fields where we can enter in names and dates and things like that. Again, some of these are set up with blank spaces for your company logo. These are intended for you to customize them in a way that fits your needs. Of course, there's profile, doing legal work, oil and gas work, or structural work. You're going to find all sorts of neat things uh, related to those. And there are other dictionaries. If you get to work with um, other languages like German or Dutch, uh, you can download those dictionaries and include them right into review. So this trick, along with a web trick, uh, closes that one. Pretty cool fun. All right, moving on. Uh, this is another data set. And what we see on the data set doesn't entirely matter. This one is all about another new function of Review 20. And one of the things that I see a lot of people get confused with or, or hung up with is, do I do a text box or do I do a call out? Which one is most appropriate here? Uh, let's do a text box here. And this will be my text box. And this is where I realized, oh, you know, I really kind of wanted that to be a call out instead. That's not appropriate. But well, what you can do as of review 20 is inside of the right click menu, there is now an option to add a leader. So I can easily convert this text box into a call out. And I can do this multiple times. You can add however many leaders I like, and I can go from there. If I want to remove a leader, you can see is right clicking on those and choosing delete leader. And the opposite works as well. If I start with a call out, and I type in something, I can easily go to that call out, right click and delete that leader. And now I have a text or piece of text box that I can use. Speaking of uh, text boxes, one thing that you'll see a lot is an auto size issue. 
where I've got this giant text box and I wrote text box, but this is just too big. One thing that you can do is right click on there and you can go in and choose auto size text box, which will sort of shrink wrap your text around there. And as long as you keep typing in here, if I just do whatever, you're just gonna see that the box around it uh, grows and it automatically sizes. Now there's a question in here from Jason. Thank you for your question. Does Bluebeam have the ability to dictate or do a voice to text feature once in the text box using our mic versus texting or typing? Not that I'm aware of. However, that could be a Windows setting or it could be another way of input, but by default, I do not believe that is a function. That is something I would like to try on the iPad version um, as there are a lot more of the, the iPad um, or the iOS function has that text to dictate. If you have the iPad version, which I am Apple free in my house, um, that might be something there, but in the Windows version, that is not a default. But thank you for that question. All right. Another thing, um, let's say that this call out here applies to all pages or it applies to several pages. In this particular file, and maybe this isn't the best one for this. Let's go over here instead. Like I said, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve when it comes to data sets. And let's say that all of these drawings here are simply the wrong scale. I can come over here and create my text box again. And I'll go over here and I'll say verify scale. And normally we'd put typical or all sheets or, or something like that. I'll go back and auto size my text box again. And what I want to do now, instead of having to type this out on every single page, I have the ability to right click on this and down towards the bottom is an option to apply to pages. This is where I can apply to all pages or just a few pages, my even pages, my landscape pages. Uh, I've got all sorts of options. So here I'll type, I'll select OK and it's going to put that verify scale at the same location on every single page. Now, obviously that's not appropriate, uh, this comment for this particular plan set, but that's one of those tricks that you can do that's gonna add efficiency to your day by not having to copy it or make a tool set out of it or, or, or anything else like that. All right, that is one. I'm gonna jump back to this particular uh, data set and I'll clean this up a little bit. I'm always worried that I'm gonna accidentally save this, but one of the other things I wanted to show was the hyperlink or the action function of uh, review. Now for any markup that you make, whether it be a, a dimension or a simple call out or a cloud plus markup like this, we have the ability to create actions for those things. Now I've just randomly selected this call out earlier, stair doors to be fire rated assemblies, typical. Ooh. Let's say, well, let's not say, I'm a civil guy. I don't work with architectural files at all anymore, it seems. And um, I don't know, let's pretend I don't know what a fire rated assembly really means. Or do I know, you know what manufacturer I'm looking for? This comment is kind of vague. If I right click on this comment, I have an option to add or edit an action. So go back. This one would be edit action. This one gives me an option to edit or delete since I've already created that action. And that action that I've created is a hyperlink. I want it to go to a specific website for fire rated doors. Now, being uh, a smart aleck, I put in a uh, let me Google that for you link. So if you haven't seen this trick before, totally not related to Bluebeam, but always fun. I click on this action, it's going to pull up my web tab, which goes to let me Google that for you.com. And you can then search, which will take you to the search for fire rated doors. So here I've got my information. Now in a proper work related workflow, maybe I would have gone directly to Trudor or Safety First or one of those other brand specific ones based on the specifications for my project. So those actions are really handy. Again, with 
so many things in review, we have the ability to add additional detail or context to what we have going on. And that action ability to give it a link and this not do that one. If I go back to edit. I can also have it open something off the server if I did have specific uh, specifications that I needed to show, or I can have it jump to uh, a different detail, right? Um, maybe I'm going to a detail on page six. I have those options by editing those actions. Pretty cool. All right. Speaking of making Bluebeam go elsewhere, I'm going to quickly open up. Um, some specifications here somewhere. And I've just got these random ones here. Now, inside of review, you do have the ability to go in and edit text. If you haven't seen that before, in the edit pull down menu, PDF content, you can edit text. And this will allow me to change to not. Or alter. So I can edit those text right here inside of this PDF file. And it's okay. Um, sometimes I find the cursor isn't quite as reactive as it would be in a Word document or something else like that. And for that, maybe I do want to take all of this information and put it back into Word or wherever it came from. And for there, we can double come up to the file pull down menu and we can go in to export where I have the ability to export. Uh, either my entire document or a region directly to Word or to Excel. Or I can make a PowerPoint out of this. And you should all know by now how much I don't really care for PowerPoint. But I'll come over here. I'll grab entire document. We'll pick this over to Word. I'll save it like I've never done this particular exercise before. It will do its thing. And then we'll be able to open it inside of Word, which is going to look like this. So here I can go in, make those changes I want to do, you know, use some of the formatting, those tools that I do not have inside of review, and then of course print it right back to Word from my Bluebeam plugin in Word. If you have Bluebeam CAD or Extreme, you're going to see some of these integrations. Uh, question Yes, this video will be available on the web to rewatch. Um, I should also use that as a good segue, save that. I go back to the web tab, whoops, web tab. We have a YouTube channel and it is fantastic. Everything that we do here at ATGUSA.com is on our YouTube channel where we have, you know, all sorts of uh, Revit videos and Bluebeam and InfraWorks and Civil 3D. All these webinars that we do are recorded and they do live on our ATGUSA.com. YouTube channel, and I'll put that link in the chat as well. Bookmark that one, and you're good to go. Thanks for the question. All right. Question Have I had any issues with printing from Revit this week? Yes, I always have trouble printing from Revit, and that is because I'm not a Revit user. Um, if I get in, into Revit and I open it and I try to print something, disaster will happen. Um, so that's sort of a tricky question. Um, I have not heard of any issues of printing with Revit this week. If you do have problems with printing from Revit, um, that's also another opportunity to try our support um, team here at ATG. If I hop over here, I'll quickly create a piece of typewriter text, and I'll just put this right here, support at AT, oh, ATGUSA.com. If you are having uh, questions with Revit printing or using the Bluebeam uh, print function that's built into Revit when you have Bluebeam CAD or Extreme. If you are having issues, give our support team a try. Um, send them their, your questions to support at atgusa.com and uh, go from there. Now, one of the questions that I see in the chat is that printing from Revit has been a problem this week due to the Windows update that is clashing with Bluebeam. Um, Windows updates, they have some of those issues. As I mentioned, uh, that Bluebeam uh, update that happened this week, you can always report an issue and maybe Bluebeam will uh, respond to it. Or you can.
you check for updates. Maybe they're going to release a new in the chat. Um, Windows update KB5000802 causes problems. You can unload that update. Thanks for that. Um, that number is repeated in the chat if you want to go take a look at that and Google it. So with that, let's keep doing our tricks. So we've just exported to Word. Uh, we can also export to uh, Excel or PowerPoint, as we mentioned. Next, I want to look at drawing things. And drawing things is one of those things that pops up quite a bit with review. And maybe I'll jump to my site plan instead. We'll do some civil stuff. Um, I'll change my profile real quick to my civil profile. That way I have access to my handy dandy civil line types. And I'll go over here and I'll drop in a storm manhole and a, that's a very ugly storm sewer manhole. Just mess with that without fixing. That's okay. I'll tweak it a little bit. There we go. Let's pretend it's perfect. All right. Um, with this, I've created these symbols. Now I want to draw some lines inside of review. Again, showing you off, showing off some of those lesser known things. I just chose line command from my toolbar. That's not what I wanted. I wanted my actual storm line that I have configured in my tool set. And I can draw a line accordingly. And if I have my snaps enabled, I can. Uh, snap to that content that will allow it to stop at that particular line. And if I go to my sewer, I can do the same thing. However, oops, I can go like that. I'm snapping to that content, which is allowing me to draw that straight line. If I wanted to make something deflect off of here, where it goes a specific direction, I don't have the same, you know, snap functionality or or drafting. Uh, functions that I would have in CAD or Revit. But what I can do is use the keyboard modifier. If I wanted to draw a perfectly straight line, I can hold down shift and it will uh, toggle me or giving me that ortho function that will allow me to draw a nice straight line. And then it will also go at a 45 degree angle. So I have those nice um, snap angles. So it's almost like a, your, your object tracking or your snap angle tracking in AutoCAD. And then once you release the shift key, it will go free. So if you're trying to draw straight lines, pull down shift, then you can click and go from there. Uh, question, is it possible to create custom line types for polyline measurements? Um, it's very easy to create custom line types like I'm displaying here with my um, storm and sanitary ones. But to do that for a polyline measurement might be something else. We'll come back to that one for the question. Um, all right. So that shift thing is a nice thing to, to do whenever you're drawing lines and you want to have them straight. Now, there are other keyboard modifiers that you might want to play with. And that's both the shift key and the control key will do different things inside of different commands. So if you're trying to draw lines or move things a certain way, um, you might want to try uh, toggling on or holding down shift or control to see if that makes a difference. All right. So as I mentioned, uh, when I jumped into this drawing, I switched to my civil profile. My civil profile is pre-populated with the tool sets that I use whenever I'm talking about civil engineering. I have a bunch of other profiles that I've got for webinars or whatever else. By default, there are four profiles loaded inside of Bluebeam Review. If you want to make your own, which I recommend you do, you can come to the review menu, go to profiles, and go down to the bottom and choose manage profiles. This is where you can um, come down here and add, and you'll make, you know, Bluebeam tricks and hit OK. Now I have a whole new profile. I can go edit this and modify it, change whatever I want accordingly. And that will stay inside of that profile, provided I go to profile and I save it when I'm done messing. All right. Good question. Another question, how do you add the snap command? That is a, actually a, a very good question, too. And this 
kind of follows along with those tricks because by default, this is not enabled. If we go up to the view pull down, you're going to see two options here, snap to markup and snap to content. I'll move my mouse away and you can see that those are highlighted in blue. If you click on them, your menu goes away. Now it's no longer enabled. If I turn off both of those, it will not snap to any content meaning that when I go try to draw a line now, it's not trying to jump to my markup, nor will it find a corner accordingly. If I toggle those back on, I can then have that line function. And if you look real close, you're gonna see that little tiny um, square pop up that is sort of my snap. And it doesn't always give me a midpoint. It doesn't give me you know, quadrants or something all the time. Your snaps aren't the same as had but they still really allow you to draw nice, crisp lines. Thank you for that question. Um, since we're just talking about profiles, I'll answer Tom's question here. Can you manage profiles for a company? Absolutely. Um, this is something that comes up quite a lot. Your profiles can be managed. And like I said, if we have tool sets that are created um, that have all of our company information in them, that's where we might want to share those tools for the rest of our team, right? Maybe we've got civil line types or gas and electric line types or, or special tools that we want to share. We can save those to a profile, go to our uh, profiles, go to manage profiles. And I can, instead of having these on my C drive, I can put these on a server location. And from that server location, uh, I can have people go there or I can simply import and export my profiles accordingly, and we can do it in that function as well. There are, if you do toggle on this dependency, that means it's gonna take the line types, and tool sets, and all sorts of things with it. The caveat to that is that if you point this to a server-based location, let's, right? so let's say I have my company um, profile set up here, that means that if somebody's messing with stuff and they're you know, changing Tool sets, if they come up to the top and go to uh, profiles, save profile, that can overwrite that file. So if you're trying to set this up for a company deployment, uh, once you have that uh, Bluebeam profile loaded up on, on your server, you're going to use your Windows protection and make that read only. Good question. Thanks, Tom. All right. Moving on with our party tricks. We just used. Um, shift to draw those straight lines. I want to show you a question that comes up all the time, and that's when it comes to area labels. But um, I want to take this a step farther. There is a really cool function for areas called dynamic fill. If I were to try to do an area of this using the area tools built into review, um, all right, there you go. Using my snap to content, I'm going to have to go in here and sort of follow this curve. And it's not going to be perfectly accurate. Is it going to be good enough? Probably. Provided that I'm calibrated to my drawing, of course. But I can follow this around and I can, I mean, I'm not keeping track of clicks, but I'm probably at 30 or 40 right now. And this is annoying. And I get this area measurement. And what usually happens is this area measurement is right over here. It's not usually in the center. And this is a really sort of annoying thing in review. I can go in here and I can rotate that text with no problem, but I can't move it. If I try to move that text, it's going to um, grab my whole uh, area measurement and move it. Instead, if you want to move that, we're gonna hold down the control key. I hold down the control key. Um, was another trick. I hold down the shift key. There we go. Uh, then we can move that, that label. If you hold down the control key, you're going to see that this whole markup is going to be copied. So this works with all sorts of callouts and things like that. If I come down to these other markups I made, like my uh, storm drain, if I hold down control, I can copy those without doing a copy paste. I'm simply holding down the control key. And wherever I move these, it's making a copy. Another little trick to throw in there. 
So the shift and control keys both do different things depending on what you're clicking on. All right. If you update a profile on the, or answering a question here, if you update a profile on the server, server would it update them automatically in user profiles? Yes, it would, provided that everyone was using that profile that was directly linked. If you did an import, it would not be a live update. If you had it go to the server location, then it would automatically update. Good question. Thank you. All right. So we've done our control and our shift. Here's another one that's kind of fun to show. I'm going to jump over to let's close some things. We're getting a little busy here. All right. Coming back over to our Bluebeam review, I have this data set for um, my regional airport terminals. Again, using my Bluebeam fake data sets here. And this is one where I really don't want this to be in color. I really should have printed this in black and white. And that's where maybe I'd have to go back to Revit or go back to CAD and print things in black and white instead. Well, I have the ability to come up to document and Towards about three quarters towards the bottom is an option for color processing. That color processing will allow me to uh, go in and grayscale my entire project. And if I do this right, um, this actually isn't a um, blue beam or line work, it's just an image. If I select process images as well, what this will do will turn everything into black and white for grayscale. So nice function. You don't have to go back to CAD or Revit or choose a different um, print driver. You can make everything black and white as we go. Another question about profiles on the server. If disconnected, do those profiles disappear? That's a fine question. I'm not positive. Um, more on that later. Um, I don't use a server here at ATG, so I'm not connected to test those workflows. I would imagine that it probably would disappear. I don't know if it has the cache uh, capability, but worth, worth testing. Thanks for the question. All right, so now I've used that color control to set things up. I also have the ability to change other colors. And I'm gonna use this opportunity to jump over to Oh, let's jump over to this, this data set. Like I said, I'll jump around a little bit. And here I've got my site plan, and I have some trees and some shrubs in here. What if I wanted to add some more? If I go to my tool chest, and what I can do is I'm in this profile for Bluebeam Tricks. So yeah, we'll just stay here. This was a copy of my, my civil one. And I have civil symbols. So I do have a tool set in here that has some symbols. And one of them was one of these trees that I had copied. But uh, let's see, I really want to do something different. Um, where else can I get more tree symbols? Well, I could come over here and snapshot. If you haven't used the snapshot tool in review, uh, you can easily snapshot and do that. Or I could go find something that wasn't so busy. Unfortunately, I'm going to take curb corners with me. I snapshot that, then I can paste it, and now I've got more symbols here. But what I was trying to get at was going back to our web tab where we had the review extensions. One of those uh, sets of tool sets was landscape. And what I can do in this case, since I've downloaded it from the website, is I can now add a new tool chest. So I'll come up to tool chest. I'll go to manage tool sets and I can import a file. So here in my Bluebeam, I have my landscaping tools, that BTX file that I downloaded earlier. I can hit open. I can end that it, it uh, already didn't exist. And now I have a whole new tool set for my landscaping tools. So if I wanted to then uh, drop in different symbology and bring that, bring that down. I can easily do so. Pretty cool function. Uh, again, this is all free content. Oops. Um, and some of them are even colored. 
free content that I downloaded from the Bluebeam website. Some of the symbology is handy, or depending on what your workflows are. Now, I, since this one came in brown, the other one came in black, uh, it's a good segue for me to show you the change color function. So another one of the, the party tricks that I had on my list. Let's say I wanted to take this uh, tree and make this brown or make this green. Um, what I can do is go to the properties of that stamp. There's an option here to change colors. And this works with all sorts of things. I want to modify colors. And my source color is black. That's the only color that it sees in it. And I want to change that black color to green. I hit OK. Now that's green. Same thing with this brown one. Um, I don't want to think about fall quite yet. We're just barely getting into spring. Let's change colors. Our source color, it gives me an option for brown. I can select that brown and also make that green. So you can do a lot of cool things with any sort of symbology inside of your Bluebeam to um, PDF markups. Can you add symbols to the toolboxes is the question. Yes, that is a fantastic question. Um, some of these symbols, let's say like this one. Oh, I've already done that. Um, yeah, well, you can do it anyway. Let's say I have a PDF file that has some symbols in it that I want to reuse elsewhere. Well, what I can do is I can use the snapshot function. Again, using snapshot, super handy. If I come over here and grab that symbol, it will now allow me to paste it. Now, when I paste it, what's going to happen is it's now live in my PDF file. In addition to that, it will always be here in my recent tools. If you haven't seen recent tools, um, this tool set exists in most profiles. And every time you open review, it will be here. And it's going to follow you around. So you can see that some of those lines that I did earlier um, are there. Some of that area measurement I did earlier was there. The recent tools I used get tracked in my recent tools. However, um, when I close review, these are all going to go away. So the next time I open up review in the morning, this is going to be blank. So if I wanted to take any of these symbols and save them to a toolbox, all I got to do is drag and drop them. So if I drag this down to training or whatever other tool set I want, let's say I wanted to do symbols, just like I did with my civil stuff. If I wanted to take those, all I got to do is drag them into my tool set. Grab something different here. Grab these trees, and I can go from there. Thank you for the question. Now these tool sets have been populated with my symbols. I can click on that, export that. Now I've got a whole new uh, training toolbox that I can send off and export. So if, let's say, I work in a landscape architecture group um, and we're just implementing review, I can fill up these toolboxes, export them, send them to my teammates. Now they all have the same symbols to work with. So great functionality here. All right. Now I want to go back to this. Uh, this is this is probably my favorite of all the party tricks. And I'm going to use this in two different ways. So one of these is that area measure, right? Last time I chose that area, I did about 50 clicks to find the area of that space. There's a tool under measure called dynamic fill. Another party trick, there's also a J there. If I type in J, guess what happens? It pulls up dynamic fill. There are keyboard shortcuts inside a review. If you didn't know what those extra letters were for, type them in and it will activate those commands. So going back to J, my dynamic fill, I have a whole bunch of things that I can create, whether it be a space, a, a polyline, uh, an area measurement, anything like that. I can choose create and I can use this dynamic fill function. Dynamic fill will allow me to left click and hold and watch what happens. Ta -da. When I hit apply, now I have an area measurement. It went and did all those 50 clicks for me. Super handy function. This can even be you know, supercharged quite a bit by using things that are already pre-populated inside of your tool set. So here I have one set up for my civil quantities that's also set up for my landscape. I can take this function and have it go find an area measurement that is landscape. And if I repeat that same command, 
Now when I do my dynamic fill, not only will it give me the area, but it's gonna be my landscape area that is already set up with my hatch pattern and everything else in there accordingly. Super handy. Of course, if I go to my markups list, we're gonna see a landscape related um, area measure. Super cool. All right, got time, we'll come back and revisit that. We've got more tricks to show you. And I think it's time to show you my cheesy elevation. And as I mentioned, I don't work in architecture. It's not my specialty, but look at this masterpiece. I mean, I drew this in Bluebeam earlier today and I, I should probably trademark it because this is amazing. Um, because I wanna use this as my sketch pad. So this goes back to a call uh, that I was on last week where somebody wanted to replace or they wanted to not replace other software. They were going to replace paper, of course, and, and doing your sketching and doing your renderings and things like that. While that's an absolute art form that I completely respect, we're still using Bluebeam to get rid of paper. So how do we do those sketches? Well, if we've got an iPad or a, a Surface or something with a stylus, you know, we've got great software for that. However, we can also use Bluebeam Review and that dynamic fill tool to do some coloring for us as well. So back to my cheesy elevation. If I wanted to add more detail to this, I can pull up my dynamic fill tool and I could tell it to create polylines and I will use my dynamic fill to drop in this area and I could have it do this area and I'll hit apply. Now I have these polylines. If I click on these polylines, if I select both at the same time, I can go over to my properties and I can go to my hatch and we'll make that brick. Brick's always nice. And um, let's see here. Let's click on our hatch. And let's make that more of a brick color. Go. And I'll take that um, border and I can get rid of that, but leave it red for now for the sake. So I've got red there. Let's do some other dynamic fill. I can go over here and add this, add this. So this is sort of answering that question that David put in the chat. Can you apply multiple area measurements to a dynamic fill? Yes, you can. I'm creating two separate areas here at the same time, but instead of using my area command or my space command, I am using polygons. So by choosing two separate areas and hitting apply, it's going to generate those two separate entities. And from here, let's put some whatever you call this stuff. Chip lap. We'll just call it chip lap. Seems appropriate. Would be not over to uh, Joanna Gaines, right? All right. So this is my masterpiece. Um, I'm ready to go to Home Depot and spend twelve dollars to build this outside. But um, from there, you know, I can use that dynamic fill tool along with my other sketch functionality to add some color, add some details, um, you know, make this kind of fancy where I can choose my different fill colors. Um, I like blue, but that blue is too dark. I can go through here, but now we're putting my purple in. Whatever, we're rolling with it. Ah, there we go. We'll call that good. And of course I can go back to my tool set, use my landscaping tools, and I thought there was more um, elevation you wanted. Maybe that was in a different tool set. Let's go find out. Um, let's see. Moving, landscaping. Oh, trees. There we go. There's a tree tool set. If I go down to trees, there we go. Now I've got this nice little pine tree. We'll drop this one on here make that nice and big of course we'll go back change our color i don't want black trees i want green trees Ta -da. there we go now if i were really fancy i'd go over here and digitally sign this and print it out on the fridge and make my wife happy but um we'll save that for another day all right uh one question we got here um how about different measurements to the same area? yes you can do that if i'll jump back to my site plan 
if I wanted to add additional measurements using that same dynamic fill tool. Let's say I wanted to know the perimeter of this area. I can come over here and measure my poly length measurement or my whatever other measurement. I'll grab my poly length, grab this. Notice that everything does disappear when you restart uh, the dynamic fill tool. Don't panic, it will still be there. I'll hit apply. And now I have my poly length. So my perimeter of this same area is 449 feet, 10 inches. All sorts of things we can do with that. All right, we're getting close on time. We're going to keep going. I'm going to go a little faster now. Uh, I'm going to jump back to my cheesy elevation. This is super cool, but I've got all these other tool sets and toolbars and stuff. It's not that impressive. If I hold down control and enter, though, ta-da! Bluebeam Review also has a presentation mode that makes everything else go away. So if you're trying to show off a set of plans and you don't want all that other stuff distracting you, hit Control and Enter, and there's a presentation mode. All right, let's hit Escape. Now we're back in business. Now I have this file, and I'm so stinking proud of it. I want to make sure that nobody else can open this. Another trick I can do is come over to Documents and go to Security. With the security option, I can actually set up um, some functions in here. Where's that? Oh, I'm not saved. I saved this. Save you, document security. I can go in, change permissions, and I can require a password to edit, copy, or print. So I can password protect my files. If I had something on you know, the server or had a phone list, or something that I didn't want messed with, but uh, I want it to be accessible to people, you can password protect things. So again, that is in document, security, and then change permissions. There's all sorts of fun stuff there. All right, we did presentation mode. We've got five left and eight minutes. So let's see what we can do. All right, we've done our elevation. We've done our site plan. I'm going to jump back to this guy right here. Now, this data set, uh, again, came from Bluebeam. It's got a lot of great information as far as callouts. Some are blue, some are yellow. These are all uh, set up in different status, um, not statuses, but the categories. And if I pull up my markups list, I have all of these subjects. So these have been set up um, architect, engineer, so on and so forth. These are all filtered by the responsibility and who created those markups. Well, one of the great things about review is the ability to respond to those markups and set statuses. And what I can do is I can go in here. Uh, there's that comment I messed with earlier. I can right click and set a status. And that status can be accepted, rejected, cancel, completed, or none. By default, those are the options. If I wanted to change those, what I can do is make sure that I have my status column enabled and go to this little slider button. If you go to that slider button, there's an option there to manage status. And when we manage the status, I can go modify these or I can add new ones. So this one is going to be, um, oh man, I'm totally drawing a blank here. This is going to be something else. There we go. How's that for creative? Now I've got something else. And I can set up these different statuses over here for whatever, complete. And I'll create another one for, um, I have a question. Goodness, fingers, come on, you can do it. Now, I wanna take this a little bit further, right? If I set these up, what I can do is I can now have those statuses where I can go to set my status and choose my something else complete and I have a question. So I can set those and that will give me that date and timestamp. But we're all about party tricks. We're going to take this a step further. I'll go back to my manage status. I'll go back to um, my something else and I'll take my I have a question. This time I'm going to modify it and I'm going to actually give this a color. So I'm going to make this bright pink and that's going to change everything. So when I hit OK, and hit OK. I now have those custom statuses. I can go find this. I'll provide detail for corner condition. 
uh, I've got a question about that. I have a question. And when I make that pink, look what happens. So I have a question. That's my status. I can go click on it. And when I go in there, it now made that pink. And I you know that calls that out for, for me to go follow up with the contractor in this case or something else. Um, pretty cool function. And uh, is that metadata that can be pulled? Absolutely. If I were to export my PDF summary, a whole other trick that I didn't plan on covering, um, uh, this might take longer than I expected. We'll see. All right. Um, I have a question. Where are you? Now it's in. So what I did there was I exported my summary of my markups and in here I've got, I've done this a couple of times. There we go. That metadata has now been used to be a part of this um, PDF summary that has that in there. So I can now put that in its own field. Can you act, export or transfer custom statuses? I believe so. We go back here, I can save to profile if i save it to my profile therefore i can um this will always be a part of this profile which means i can export that profile or manage it as we showed before good questions thank you so much all right um a couple more tips i want to show you before we run out of time one thing is our preferences there is an option here to change from a light theme to a dark theme and vice versa. Some folks really like a light theme. You can set that up. Watch your eyes, boys and girls. And when I hit OK, it will take a couple seconds. Now we're in a light theme. My blue beam review totally looks different. All of my tool sets are now light. So if you want to set yourself apart or make things easier on your eyes, change your preferences, go to your options, and you can change light or dark. All right, one other tip that we're going to get in here, drawing mode and properties mode. This one comes up so often, and I think that's um, kind of important. So since we're we talked earlier today about saving things in our tool chest and getting them set up as far as, you know, making them reusable through profiles and other things like that. If I create a text box saying, are these the right size? I can go customize this thing in all sorts of ways, right? I can make this uh, green, and I can make the font blue, and oh, that's gross. Um, blue, something like that. I can spend all that time setting up those properties. And as I mentioned, everything that we do is being tracked in our recent tools. If I take my recent tools, drop this down here, Next time I go to activate that command, it's going to drop this in that same way. I must not have saved before I changed my color blue there. But what I can do in that case is every time I click on this, it's going to give me those customized colors. But what if I don't want it to always say, are these the right size? This function is supposed to be well known, but it's really kind of not. If you double click on this, watch this icon. When I double click, it's going to change that icon entirely. Now it is in properties mode, where it will allow me to draw, oops, went too fast there, do that again. Will allow me to draw anything and it will keep those same colors. It won't give me the same text or call out. It will just allow me to do whatever I want. If you double click on that, it will take it right back to your original comments where you can reuse any of that is properties and drawing. And that is about all of the tips we have to show you today. Um, there's a question that I have to answer because I just can't help myself. So uh, what we could do in this markup here, um, everything by default is going to be red, right? So if you really don't like seeing red or maybe you've got colorblind issues or something else, whenever you change this, Take my font color to blue, for example, you can select that markup, come down to the bottom and set it as a default. That means that the next time I do a call out, it's going to be green and it's going to be blue. 
just like I have shown here. So you can change that default accordingly. And with that, I'm sorry to say we're jumping back to PowerPoint, and I will flip this real quick. You've asked a lot of questions today, and that is fantastic. I appreciate your interaction uh, with me today. This webinar is part of our series. We try to do at least two to three a week. Um, we've got one coming up on the 25th about using the CTC tools to clean up your Revit project. And then on the 30th, we'll be talking about BIM 360 for Civil 3D and collaboration with that. In addition, uh, we've got uh, one for converting CAD details to our Revit asset. This webinar and all of our upcoming webinars, as well as our past webinars, can be found on our YouTube channel. And um, if you're interested in seeing those, you know, I put that in the chat. Go check that out. Now, I can't leave today without talking about the morning coffee review. The morning coffee review is something that Michael Achave, another certified professional or instructor, here at ATG, him and I get together and we talk about coffee, we talk about Bluebeam, and we talk about all sorts of things. But And we do the, the not so work-related chit-chat before 8.30, but right at 8.30, we start talking about Bluebeam. So just like you've asked questions today, come join us. Grab a cup of coffee, uh, hop on our call, and ask questions. We'll go through all sorts of things. So some of these tricks that I've shown you today um, they might pop up again, or maybe we'll have new ones to show. So there's all sorts of fun things. So with that, I want to thank you all so much for your time. Thanks for spending your hour with me. Um, I really appreciate you tuning into ATG's uh, webinar content. Please stay safe. Take care.